Good morning everyone and welcome back to the cabin. What I'm actually doing is I'm working on this front post which is actually the last post that I have. I'm going to have to fell a couple of trees and uh, mill up some tie beams. I need one, two, three plus the ridge beam. So I'm going to get this thing laid out. Um, there's a tenon on that end. So we're going to mark this starting at two inches and then at eight. Okay. Then we're going to go up, we've got 7 foot, plus the beam is 10 inches, so we add 10, so that's 7 foot 10, and that is a uh, 10 inch tenon, so that would be 8 foot 8, and let's see, that's it. Right. Alright, then the side facing you, which is the camera, brace at seven foot. Okay, one there and one there. And then we've got um, a tie beam at ten foot and ten foot six. I've already got the top marked. I always look back and double check these because I could dig a hole out in the wrong spot.
and I've got a little bit more hewing to do on a post that I had started the other day. Then I've got some changes to some of the others I'm going to make. And then at some point I'm going to have to fell a couple of trees for the sawmill because I need four more 16 foot uh, beams to be able, or tie beams, to be able to tie the two walls together. So I will meet you down at the workshop. I will tell you, when you're coming upon a knot like this, it's hard to strike the bottom side of it without it digging in real deep. So go to the upper side of it, work your way back to the knot, like so. Then, you want to reverse, go the other way, and work back towards the knot again. And then it won't dig in really, really, really deep. On these two positions right here, I decided to go ahead and build a collar and take this down um, another inch so that I've got one inch setting on the beam and two inches down in the tenon and that's where my pins are going to go on the outside. Um, so I went ahead and cut this out and now I am digging it out. Even though my beams are going to have supports um, and the span between the top portions of the two beams on each side is only going to be 8 foot, I decided to go ahead and make it a little bit more heavy duty. So that's what we're doing.
get these loaded up. Then get them over there on the pile where we can burn them and get them oiled up. I'm going back and double checking all of these things. One thing that you don't want to do, uh, because it's much harder to do once it's up, is to make sure you've got all your mortises um, that you're going to be using in that post. So I've been concentrating on building that shed for the tractor and thinking about the upstairs and downstairs flooring. But I've also got to remember that I've got beams on this side that are going in to connect. And I've got one on the front and one on the back. So I pulled the back post back out. I forgot to put this one in because I'm thinking all of this stuff up in my head. And then I've got the post on the front that I'm going to have to add because those are the ones that you will be able to see from the outside. And we want them to be the same as the rest of them. So we've got two more mortises that we're going to have to dig out here.
it's a little difficult to keep these blowing pine needles out of the tray. Well, friends, looks like I got that uh, oiling done just in time because I got a text. I'm getting a delivery of logs. So I'm going to have to go up here. We'll jump in the 574 and we'll run down there because they text me there almost here. Well, we've got this load unloaded and he told me that he was going to bring me another load. The next one's going to be pine for the siding up there. But I'll tell you what, that TYM 574 sure made short work of this. Um, it, it is a beast. I actually lifted these things straight up. Um, I'd say they're probably maybe 1,500. Uh, the bottom one's maybe pushing 2,000 pounds because they're about 24 inches at the base and almost 17 feet long. But uh, the Kubota would have never done that, the size that I had. So we're really proud of this new um, 574 and the work that it can do. Well, friends, the wooden mallet that I was using, actually, the head cracked on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the wood pile. We're going to get us a piece of oak out of there, and we're going to make us a two-piece wooden mallet. This is a handle that I'd made for something else, but I think this will work good for this hammer. So, we will just outline it. Give me something to go by when I drill. I 
I don't know if this is going to be heavy enough. If it's not, we'll just have to make us another one. I actually had to go get a rounded chisel. By that I mean half moon shaped. I could get that curve in there. I think once I get this handle down in here, now I didn't put it all the way through. I think once I get, I'm gonna drill some holes and put some pins in it too. I had to get some different woodworking tools out here. These are the ones that I basically carve with, and I need a smaller um, chisel, like that quarter inch chisel right there. I think we'll try that and see how it works. Well, I got the pins in there. I got them actually ground off, and we have made ourselves a new mallet. I don't know how long this is going to last because <clears throat> those great big timber frame chisels, I actually work them out. I give them a beating, but um, I don't know. It's It's got a lot of leverage with that long handle. We'll just have to see how long it lasts. I actually made this one um about three years ago but you can see it's got some major cracks in it um but i used it quite a lot building the cabin 
and I think I even used it when I was building the outdoor kitchen and the compost toilet. So this thing has lasted quite a while. Now, if this one doesn't, I'll make another round one. This one was actually made out of dogwood. This right here is a piece of oak, and this handle is a piece of dogwood. So we'll see how long that'll last. Well, I've just about got all of the posts and all of the beams that I'm going to need. I've still got to cut out of those new logs uh, three 16 footers, and then I've got two 6x10 beams for the upstairs flooring I'm going to have to cut. Once I get that hewed out, get them burnt and get them oiled, then we're ready to set that so that we can start cutting sheathing uh, to close this end in so that we'll have a place to park the new tractor. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Hope each and every one of you have a fantastic day. Y'all take care, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.